This is the FX 6300 and Asus motherboard combo I've been rocking daily for five years now. At the start of this year, I covered my main machine in a video, and lots of people recommended to me that I should upgrade as soon as I can. So, I'm happy to introduce to you all my new main machine. So I guess we should start off by talking about the newest and most important additions to my machine, the motherboard and CPU. I got extremely lucky with the CPU, which is why I started building this system around it. The heart of this system is an i5-3470S, which I was lucky enough to get for an absolute steal of £3.95, which is crazy to take into account that it was a buy it now listing. It's based on the 1155 Ivy Bridge platform, rocking 4 cores at 2.9GHz. What I really like about the Ivy Bridge chips is that it really pairs well, era-wise, to my GTX 780. Obviously, now that I had my 1155 CPU, I needed a motherboard. After quite a bit of research over what other options that I could get on eBay at the time, I picked the MSI H61i E35 V2, a mini ITX motherboard with support for processor and memory overclocking, which is why I chose it over the other options of ITX boards on eBay. The reason I chose ITX over something with more expandability, such as MATX, is because I do plan to downsize my system at some point. And honestly, even if I don't downsize, I love the layout of BitPhoenix's MITX cases. Talking about cases, we have to address another new addition, my Corsair Carbide Air 240. At first, I only started using this case temporarily as it was left over from an older build my brother did, whilst I was waiting to purchase a mini ITX case. However, I've really grown to love how much potential this case provides, with three 3.5 inch hard drive bays, three 2.5 inch bays, and nine different mounting points to add fans. Therefore, I'll keep this case for the time being. I don't currently have any intentions to purchase a new case. I think it's quite obvious to anyone what colour scheme I had in mind when designing this system. As red and black is my favourite colour combination, I settled on that being one of the main focuses in this build. To achieve this red and black colour scheme, I made sure to use the Corsair SP120 fans for their interchangeable colour rings. All the fans in this system are running at 5 volts to keep the noise output of this system as minimal as possible. Even more colour matching, I DIY painted the CPU cooler red and even vinyl wrapped my RAM sticks, which is only a temporary measure until I get some nice heat synced sticks. I guess this is a time to mention stickers. I have my good old Techwen logo stuck inside the case and also a sticker referencing the song you Enjoy Myself by Fish, as I thought it matched the colours of the build and it's also a pretty good song. My storage configuration has maintained the same from my FX build, with my 3TB WD red containing all my YouTube data, the 1TB WD blue holding my games library and various documents, and my Crucial M4 as my main boot drive. Now that we've got all the specs out the way, I think our next port of call is to compare the benchmark scores between the FX build and the new i5 based rig, to see what performance I've gained. So without further ado, let's get straight into the benchmarks. Just another day grinding up stone Till they turn into dust It's tough times in the rough Diamonds ain't enough to cover up A corrupted and fucked up Legacy of strange fruit Bloody whips and smallpox Trigger happy cops Barbed wire and fire water Y'all it don't stop When the colonizer came With the cross and the sword I do the first spear and said I declare war I'm a battle scar wearing their apparent Descendant of a long lineage of proletariat 
proletariat and peasant So check the work ethic in the name The lessons might change but the essence of the message is the same So when they say anything say why is it Class is in session till the teacher gets a big slip I ride the rhythm and buy the little wine talk And get the concrete to line with your spine So when they say anything say why is it Class is in session till the teacher gets a big slip So keep marching till your feet split open no rest for the weary blue scholars keep going So, uh, I didn't really expect to have this as a conclusion. In our benchmarks, most of the scores stayed consistent between the FX and the i5, showing no real performance gain. But what I think this is really down to is the use of V-Sync limiting our frames to 60. If they were let loose, I'm sure we would be able to come to the conclusion that the i5 can absolutely dominate the FX. Another factor would have been the use of the same settings across the board, because I wanted to keep things easy to compare. But when I'm actually playing games on the i5, my settings can now be significantly increased and still have silky smooth gameplay. So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed seeing my new rig, with a rather disappointing conclusion. <laughs> my name's Owen, and I'll see you in the next video.